It's time to do another interview, and this time it's with Randall Cooper, who's the owner of Premax. It's a company in Australia that sponsors cycling, and it's because they make a product that's suitable for cycling. It's a, a whole collection of creams and different ointments, and you can see one of them there. That's actually a chamois cream that I've been using, and it's fantastic. So that's touching the surface of what we're going to talk about, but really what Randall knows a lot about is skin and skin care. And I'm talking to him because, well, summer's coming and tan lines are here. You can see even since the lockdown with not that many rides, to be honest, certainly not that many rides with, uh, without arm warmers or UV sleeves, as they're now called. Um, and I've already got quite a lot of sun markings, but I tend to go brown pretty quickly. That's me. Um, now, why I'm doing this interview is that Randall knows a lot about the performance gains that can come from looking after yourself, looking after your skin, looking after your body. He's got a little presentation which overviews what he knows about it. It's not necessarily seasonal, but I think given the, the context of summer approaching in Australia and the UV getting quite extreme, um, it's, a, it's an opportune time to find out a little bit more. So. Without further ado, I'm going to welcome him to this stream and we'll see where we end up. I think that we will get some insight that we probably weren't expecting before I started this interview. Randall's talked to me a little bit about it in the past, but I said, wait, 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 wait. Let's put it all on the record. So that's what we're doing now. This is not a paid promotion. I'm doing it because I, I like Randall. I, I respect what he has to say. And the Premax products for what it's worth are absolutely fantastic. Ideal for the cyclist. And that's why he's got the association with several sponsorships to do with cycling. Okay, there's the intro out of the way. Let's bring Randall in. One, two, three. Here he G'day. goes. How are you going? Very well. How are you? Uh, very good. Good to see you. You've got, uh, I've got my creams in the background. You've got your bikes. So perfect. I do have one of your creams as well, but I should preface that it's the women's chamois cream that I've started using because I need to replenish my men's stock. We yes. can get to the it's about those uh, those items later on, but um, yeah, no thanks for taking the time to have a chat. I've done a little intro explaining that you're going to talk a lot about skin. Yes. And um, I wonder if before we rip into the skin part of the discussion, you could just give an outline of how Premax came into existence. We've done this before, but I've never published. So do you mind just sort of giving a quick overview of, of your company? No, not at all. So I'm a sports physiotherapist by trade. I've, I've been really fortunate in my career where I've worked in AFL, I've worked um, um, with Olympic teams and travelled all over the world. And when I was working um, at the end of sport, what I realised was that the, the creams and the lotions that we used on the athletes um, weren't very good. They just, they kept complaining um, so much so that you know, the, a lot of the athletes would pass for like treatment with massage creams or heat rubs or whatever um, an hour or two before they had to go and train or play. Um, so they could shower before they'd go out and kind of get on the bike or get on the football field. And I thought that just wasn't good enough. Like, you, you know, when you kind of work at that level of sport, you're always looking for the 1% changes. And um, the idea came to me that why why not why not make some better skincare products for these athletes? And it didn't take much to go home to my wife and talk to her about her hand cream or face cream or whatever, and she'd rave about it, saying how great they were. Sorry, Randall, but have you yeah. got a slow connection because you're dropping out a lot? Okay, well, we'll try and work out that technicality, but it's not a big deal. But uh, I just was saying to Randall, it's a little bit difficult when the image just breaks up and I... You know, I know that he's got interesting things to say, but we can't, he's doing that kind of thing. Anyway, you understand it's modern technology. We will go through it. For the record, Randall and I had started talking of say for a year ago. So I've been a year using Premax products. All of this stuff that we're about to talk about, all the Premax creams that, well, Randall's going to talk about, they're all made in Australia. They're all Australian made. Here he is again, and hopefully we'll get a clear connection. So. He was talking about uh, going to his wife and Randall, you were talking about your wife approving the concept of making a company that built creams for sports. Um, yes. Do you want to keep going with that? Yeah. So she, you know, she basically said skincare can be great. So I don't know why you're putting up with, you know, such rubbish kind of in the, 
um, with your athletes and your patients. So it's like, oh, there's a, there's a gap in the market. There's there's something here that can be done. Um, and Premax just started off really as a, a very small side project. We made a couple of massage creams and they quite quickly became the most known um, and best-selling massage cream brand in Australia. And the, the athletes and particularly cycling was the one, the sport that kind of uh, came and said, uh, you do these great massage creams for the therapists and we actually like getting treated with them, but can you do some stuff for us as well? Like we can't find a great sunscreen um, that's really dry and light and it keeps running to our eyes. And, you know, there's plenty of chamois creams around, but nothing's truly awesome. So is there something that you can do for us as, as well? And it was about seven or eight, nine years ago where we made that leap to, to kind of go from um, a brand for just practitioners to also making products for athletes and particularly cycling is such a big sport for us as well. So, you know, here we are nearly 15 years later and um, that's the that's the Premax journey. Okay, super. You've sent me a little uh, PDF with some, just some bullet points about what we're gonna talk about today. It yep. all looks pretty interesting to me, but I don't think I really need to um, reiterate them. I think the whole idea is that you will go through a little presentation that you do for practitioners and just explain. Basically, I was sort of doing the intro saying you could improve your cycling performance by looking after your skin. And then I gave my um, example as, as a way of, look, this is how quickly it can happen. Is that a bad sign? We don't want tan lines. They're not cool, are they? Well, you know, it, it's, it's a really interesting debate because, um, it, it, it's like anything, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of sun is okay. Um, generally we say kind of get a fake tan, not a real one, um, because too much sun can give you not only, you know, skin cancer and bad problems, but it also can just prematurely age your skin as well. So, but I know cyclists particularly, like they love their tan lines. They wear them with pride. Um, and it shows that the weather's getting nice as well. Um, but maybe things are changing also as well. You know, I've got a lot of people, customers of ours who, you know, 30s, you know, through to getting older as well. And they've had skin problems and, um, you know, we hear about it. So, you know, we're here really to try and, you know, help people um, look after their skin. And not only just, you know, with skin cancer and ageing, but we also consider the, um, the, the, the skin as actually a performance organ. And the skin's your largest organ that you have in your whole body. In every inch of skin, 19 million skin cells, 650 sweat glands, and 20 blood vessels and 1,000 nerve endings in every inch of skin. So it is your conduit to the world. Um, it, it accounts for about 15% of your body weight. And it's your first line of defense against um, infection looking after your skin both for your long-term health and your short-term health on the bike is really important but one of the one of the big things with with skin also is is that it regulates your body temperature so if you've got the wrong kit on if you've chosen the wrong kind of um, apparel for what you're going to do that day and particularly if you're going to rub the you know the the right or the wrong kind of lotions and rubs on you before as well it can it can have a massive difference on 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 your enjoyment that day and also your performance as well you started with just a, a massage cream or the sun cream or which came first? And is there a, a sequence of uh, which, which items of yours that you'd recommend so that people can basically start caring for their skin better? The two or three big products for cyclists that we do are chamois cream. You know, chamois cream is an obvious one. Um, saddle sores can be a real issue. Now, you know, in speaking to some colleagues in, in British cycling, you know, they had a, a enormous trouble with saddle sores kind of leading into the London Olympics. It was a massive Olympics for them, both in the ride, on the road and on the track, to the point where they think that they lost three medals um, at the Olympic Games because of saddle sores. Um, and it tends to be a problem um, that can be worse in female riders. So much so that, you know, like there's been a number of them that, that have retired and, and need surgery. Um, because the saddle sores have kind of got that bad. Now, it's not only, clearly it's not only about whether you should or shouldn't, you know, wear chamois cream or not. Um, there's so, so many other factors in there, you know, like your, your setup and the humidity and how much training you're doing and the pitch of your seat and all these things, they, they do make a difference. 
Um, but, you know, making sure that, you know, like the skin's in good shape um, and you do have some lubrication down there is kind of really important as well. So we do a, we actually do a female and a male version of our chamois creams um, that are different and suit, suit um, the needs for both females and males. So, you know, that's for cyclists, the chamois cream is clearly like the, the number one product that um, for skin that the cyclists will buy. Moving on. You, would you be... touched on the differences from gender could, and we've spoken about this before, but could you give a quick summary of why uh, women's creams are different to men's creams? We all got skin. Yes. So um, the women essentially kind of their, essentially their, their contact area on the, on the bike is, is right on their private parts. And the, the pH of their private areas is actually different to the pH of abnormal skin. So what we know is that if the pH goes out of kilt um, with the ladies uh, down there, um, they can get problems with vaginosis and thrush and bacterial infections and things. So the first thing we do is we actually match the pH uh, so it's balanced uh, for the ladies down there as well. We also have a different range of essential oils and extracts that we put in each of the chamois creams. And for the ladies, like we actually use more of a feminine one that are a little bit more kind of appropriate um, for, for, for where it's being applied with the guys. Um, you know, it's got slightly more kind of masculine kind of raw ingredients, but at the same time, like they're there to help to uh, prevent infection, um, to help soothe the skin. Uh, and make it appropriate for the difference in the skin types that's between the two um, the two creams. Okay, just on the saddle sore, I don't want to pick you up on all of the topics which we raised because we could go for hours, but my experience with saddle sores, and there's been many over the years, that they tend to stem from grown hairs. Um, how does the cream assist with a, like when there's the little the little head rearing up and, and and you know what I'm talking about. And then suddenly you've got a cyst if it all goes bad. Yeah, no, it, it can be. And usually what happens is that the, 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 the hair kind of breaks off at the level of the skin. Um, and then when it starts to regrow or start to regrow kind of under the surface of the skin again, you'll get an ingrown hair uh, that um, gets irritated very quickly. It can get infected very quickly because there's the breach of the skin as well. So, um, yeah, delicate topic, Rob, but, you know, like, uh, uh, we'll, be we'll be candid here, but I know in talking to, in talking to the elite guys and girls, they either, they either kind of, like, uh, extremely smooth down there or not at all, if that makes sense, and not halfway kind of in between. So um, if you shave, like, you kind of do it pretty regularly. Um, but, yeah, it's also what your body's used to. Like, you see this in physio all the time as well as that, you can have a golden rule for everyone, but it doesn't work for everyone. So if you do have problems down there, um, make a change, you know, and it's, again, it's not, again, whether you just use chamois cream or not, it, it can be your mix. It can be whether you're shaving or not or, or letting it grow out. All those things can make a difference. You'll get into a place that can work for you for sure. What, what else can we do to, to help ourselves? Yeah, so the, the next thing and the, the obvious one, particularly for the Australians, is is um, um, is sun is sun care um, and sunscreen. Yeah, you've got to think of yourself as an outdoor worker if you're a serious cycler. The other interesting thing, looking into the research, is that um, there there hasn't been spoken a lot about in the mass media, and there's only preliminary studies. A lot of them are in mice, but what they've found um, is that there seems to be like the combination of wind and also the sun combined um, can make you, uh, like the irradiation of your skin can get increased. And there's one study where they, they kind of um, got some rats, mice in the lab, and they subjected them to four weeks of seven mile an hour winds. Um, and then they also had UV on them as well. And then they put that against kind of like the rats that, um, or the mice that didn't have um, any wind. And they found that the, 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 the mice that had the wind as well as the UV, uh, their skin was in a lot worse shape um, with spots and things as well. So the, 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 the theory is, is that with the wind that's kind of going across your face or your body regularly, it actually sloughs off your superficial kind of skin cells and layers reasonably more aggressively than normal life, which then exposes the skin to kind of more UV irradiation. So it's, it's very topical for, for cyclists um, 
because if you're riding along normally at 27 or 30 kilometers an hour for most of your ride, that's heaps more than seven miles an hour. So I think protecting yourself from the wind as well as kind of protecting yourself from the sun um, can help with like overall skin health as well. Like it's really important. It's not something that people talk about a lot without making this a big advertorial. Like, I mean, it's one of the reasons why we actually put a product together for this. Um, and that's what we call our weather defense facial cream. So we put it, we, we actually get the athletes to kind of put it in tandem with the sunscreen. So I put the sunscreen on first to protect, protect from the UV, but then our weather defense is sports specific and it actually provides that protective layer um, for athletes who are exposed to the wind. Um, the skin's a, a very live organ. A lot of the time we just think that it's, it's um, passive, it doesn't do much, you know, you rub your arm, after being in the sun, you'll get a few flakes that come off, but the skin actually renews itself every 28 days. So it's, it's, it, it requires a lot of energy from the body. Uh, mm -hmm. As we said before, um, that it's the largest organ, it weighs a number of kilograms. Um, and if there's, if there's a problem with it, um, whether that's, it's trying to heal itself or there's an infection with it, it it saps an enormous amount of energy. Well, I think one of the things that sort of piqued my interest to talk to you was that so much energy and, uh, and marketing spend is invested to uh, save watts with aerodynamics or um, by using a better lubricant or having a better chain line, all these sorts of things. You're looking for these little micro gains or marginal gains, obviously got to say it, um, to improve your performance. Uh, and uh, some things that I think are neglected are blood flow and what we're talking about right now. So <laughs> I just think it's a chance for people to sort of think outside the box when they're thinking about, you know, what, what, what might be slowing them down, what might be making them more tired after a ride. And um, it just seems to be a really obvious talking point. And as you said, it's not often discussed. There's been a few studies that have shown that particularly with sunscreen, if you put wrong sunscreen on your body it can inhibit your sweat production to the same extent mm. as putting on it an antiperspirant so if you're going to be riding on a 32 degree morning um, in sydney and you've got a zinc based sunscreen that doesn't allow you to sweat you're not going to have a good day so and kind of going back to the anecdotal experience you know like why i started this sports skincare you know uh, company in the first place was that it, it, it's the studies have been done on sunscreen, but there's no doubt that there's other kind of creams and rubs and lotions and potions that uh, have a similar effect as well. Um, so I think that when for the cyclists, like um, making sure that you pick the right sunscreen, the right embryo, the right heat cream, even the right moisturising cream or something, or makeup, you know, if you're going to kind of ride with a bit of lippy on or something like that as well, is, is really kind of important. Um, to make sure at, at the very base level that you're enjoying yourself, you're not feeling like you're cooking in a layer of oil. Um, but if you're out there to race and, and compete hard and do the best you can, then it, it, it's got a it, it's a key thing for performance as well. A big part of talking to you today, Rob, is is not just to talk about the brand; it's really to talk about the concept of how skin should be viewed, um, both for health reasons and performance reasons. Um, so, you know, I hope that, you know, there's a bit of insight there and we're very happy to help people with just general questions as well. So reach out. Thanks a lot. I mean, I, you were very coy about talking about Premax. I'm not, I'm not worried. I, that's why we're talking. That's what brought us together. And that's why I'm learning. And that's why I reckon over the last year, I've taken better care of my skin and well, I, I feel like I'm riding better than I've ever been. So uh, hopefully it's just that constant evolution of product and knowledge that um, has served me well. And I hope it, uh, the same applies to other people who maybe will learn something from this video. Yeah, no, th th thank you, Rob. And I appreciate the opportunity to chat today. Super, Randall. Well, thanks a lot. I'll, uh, I'm going to jump onto the site and order a couple of bits of uh, chamois cream because that's needed, hopefully. Because, uh, I plan on getting out there and, and enjoy myself on the bike as much as I can. Great, thanks.